so it's going to be a lot more sensitive than usual. And I just wanted to talk about random stuff, stuff that I've been into lately. So why not, you know, fair warning, this video will contain spoilers for the new Cyberpunk Edge Runner show. So if you were planning on watching that or just don't want it spoiled for you, go ahead and click off the video. No hard feelings. Anyway, I just got finished watching the show. Well, technically I watched it like a few days ago, but pretty recently. I don't know when it came out exactly. Um, it wasn't something that I was really like looking out for. Um, I didn't even know it was going to be a thing until like probably about the day that I found out about it and then watched it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know they were planning on making it. I just saw some posts online about a cyberpunk show and I was really looking forward to the game because I really like sci-fi and that kind of stuff. So, um, when I heard that it was a show, I was like, I'll give it a shot, because I didn't really end up liking the game, unfortunately. But that was kind of a whole other thing, I'll get into that later, but uh, I thought the show was really good. I thought it was really good, actually. Um, it was technically, like, the first anime I've ever watched. I don't know. It depends on if you count things like uh, Avatar The Last Airbender and, like, Legend of Korra. Um, where they're like, they're technically in like an anime style, but it's still made by a Western studio. Um, so if you don't count those, then Cyberpunk Edge Runners was the first anime I've ever watched. Um, but if you do count those other ones, then yeah, it's like the third one I've watched. I've never watched like Dragon Ball Z or any of the other Western animes. I don't know. I just never really watched Cartoon Network as a kid. We always watched, my family always watched Disney and Nickelodeon. We never watched any of the Cartoon Network shows like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Or like, what's the one with like the kids that are all spies? It's like Kid Next Door or like Spy Next Door or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I never watched it, so. Go name Next Door or something like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, we only really watched. Disney and Nickelodeon shows like uh, Drake and Josh, Spongebob, iCarly, that sort of thing. But it was really good. Edge Runners was really good. Also, side note, um, in the show, it's revealed that uh, the term Edge Runner is kind of like a synonym for cyberpunk. So I think it's kind of funny that the name of the show is technically like cyberpunk, cyberpunk. <laughs> kind of silly, I think, but... It sounds cool, I guess. But yeah, the show was really good. I really liked the characters. I, I was really impressed with, like, I don't know, I was thinking about it the other day after I'd watched it, and uh, it felt really short, but probably, that's probably just because I watched it literally all in one day. Um, I just started watching the first episode, and then I was like, all right, I'll just finish it. <laughs> um, but it felt really short, but I feel like they were able to do a lot with the amount of times that they, like, had in the show. Like, it was short. It felt short, but it still felt like there was, like, a lot of content, if that makes sense. I don't know. Like, I feel like they were able to do a lot with a little, if that makes sense. I don't know. I was really impressed by it. I was, like, the, the ending was really sad, and I was, like, really attached to the characters, even though I had only been introduced to them, like, of, like... Um, the episodes are only like, it, I mean, on Netflix it lists them as being 25 minutes, but they're probably closer to 20 minutes each because of the credits and everything. Um, so I mean, 10 episodes of 20 minutes, that's only 200 minutes, which is like a little over three hours, which is fairly long for, I guess, a movie. So I think, I guess you think like, if you can get attached to a movie character, you know, then this is more time than that. So you technically could get more attached to these characters but even still like I said it just felt short um, but it was really good it was really well done I'm just a huge fan of the cyberpunk universe and like that aesthetic of like because I'm really big into sci-fi but uh, I have no idea what that noise was <laughs> I hope you can't hear that you can probably hear that 
because it sounds really loud to me. I guess my neighbors are doing something. I have no idea. Hopefully, that was it. Um, anyway, I'm really big into the cyberpunk aesthetic. I'm, I'm really big into sci-fi, but a lot of sci-fi, I feel like, ends up going like one of two routes. It goes like really hard into like this utopian, like pristine, crystalline, like future where like everything's perfect. Not necessarily perfect in the sense that like there's no bad guys, because obviously there's always going to be bad guys in whatever storytelling, you know. But um, perfect in the sense that like everything is really clean. Everything is really like everything works really well. But I like that Cyberpunk's universe is very like gritty, very dark. It's very, it's a much more realistic take, a much more plausible take on what the future may look like. Definitely not in the year 2077, but uh, maybe in like the year like 2200 or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really like that aesthetic. I was actually talking about the game, Cyberpunk 2077, I was really excited for the game. I mean, I remember watching the reveal trailer when I was like, I don't know when that came out at this point. It was like 2012, I think, maybe, maybe 2013. I would have been 12 years old. Um, so it, it like, <laughs> I don't know if they'd been working on it that whole time. Probably not, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why they would have revealed it so early. But anyway, I'm talking about the trailer with uh, the girl that's like, kneeling on the pavement with the mantis blades and she just like massacred a bunch of people it's a really short trailer um and like i said it's not even like a trailer for the game it was just a trailer for like hey we're working on this new thing now um but i mean like yeah what, what, what's not to like as a kid you know like 12 years old it's a girl in like lingerie and uh she just massacred a bunch of people in this like futuristic like city and there's a bunch of like totally rad uh, sci-fi art. It's like, yeah, instantly fell in love. Um, and so I was really excited for the game, especially when they started making it clear that like development was well underway and like it was getting closer and closer to release. Because like I said, that reveal came out like 10 years ago at this point, but they didn't start like actually showing the game until like four years ago or whatever. I don't know. There was a long gap where it was just like, you completely forgot about it. Um, and actually, I feel like the game ended up looking a lot different uh, in the end than that original reveal trailer led it to believe. I feel like they, it had a much grittier look in that reveal trailer, whereas the finished game has like a lot of colors and like a lot of vibrant, like, it's a much more like retro 80s kind of look. I feel like, I don't know. But anyway, I was really excited for the game. I was really looking forward to it. Um, and when they dropped that like 48 minute uh, gameplay reveal and my exposure sucks ass. Um, when they dropped the 48 minute reveal, or gameplay reveal, it was like, okay, this is gonna be the best game ever made. Um, I'm really big into like Skyrim too, so in those like RPG games. Um, interestingly, I'm not actually that big of a fan of The Witcher games, uh, as opposed to Skyrim. I think Skyrim's a way better game, just personally. I mean, nothing against you if you like The Witcher better. Perfectly acceptable. It's still I, I can concede that it is a very well-made game. Um, it's just not really my type of game. I prefer being like a completely random character as opposed to playing the story of another person. So like in The Witcher, you were playing as Geralt, whereas in Skyrim, you're just playing as some random fucker, you know? I prefer the random fucker, uh, just because I can like, you know, it, 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 it's more immersive for me personally, I guess. I like can imagine myself as the character better because it's not an established character, you know? But um, maybe that's just me, I don't know. But anyway, I was a little worried when the game was scheduled to release that, like, when it came out, it was going to be more similar to the Witcher games, obviously, because it was made by CD Projekt Red, who made the Witcher games. Um, so, obviously, they're going to probably make the game similar to other 
games that they've made in the past. So I was a little worried that it would end up that way, but I was still looking forward to it because I figured that maybe even if it was that way that I would still like it. I don't know. But um, I didn't end up actually getting it when it came out, even though I was really looking forward to it because at the time I only had an Xbox One and I had already like had plans to get an Xbox Series X at the point at that point and I didn't want to buy it for an Xbox One if I was going to get an Xbox Series X like soon down the line you know so I figured I would just wait until I got an Xbox Series X and then I'd just get it for that um turns out that that was maybe the best decision of my life that was really loud sorry um it was a good decision because the game came out and it was really bad I mean it depends on who you ask, obviously. Uh, some people are going to like it, some people are going to hate it. One thing that I don't think anyone can deny, though, is that the game was really, really unfinished, and it was really, really buggy, which no one really expected because it was CD Projekt Red, who had gotten pretty much universal praise for The Witcher 3, which was a really polished and well-made game. So it kind of came out of left field that it was so unfinished and buggy. But yeah all the reviews came out and it was really bad so I was I just kind of forgot about it honestly it wasn't until a little while later that I found out that you can actually like trial games on the Xbox like you don't have to buy them you get like I don't know I think it might be two hours you get two hours to play the game as much as you want it's like the full game it's not like a limited demo or something so that was pretty cool um I found that out so I was like fuck it and this was like a, a good while after like probably maybe close to a year after the game came out and yeah, maybe closer to like six to eight months I don't know but uh, it was around that time and the game had received a few updates so it was in a better place than it was at launch and so I was like well it's free and I might really like it and if I don't and no loss so I figured I would try it um, so I did download it and I did play it a little bit and I just wasn't really into it. Like I said, I love the aesthetic. I love the, the universe surrounding the game, but um, I'm just, I, I just wasn't a big fan of the storytelling. I don't like playing like a movie. Like I'm not big into like the GTA campaigns. I always liked GTA Online better than the campaign just cause it's like, I don't know. There is a level of that that I like can enjoy, you know, it's, it's more akin to like watching a movie in my opinion than playing a game. But honestly, if it was down, if, it, if it, for me, if it was between watching a movie or playing a very linear story driven game, I'd probably just opt to watch a movie personally. I feel like if I'm going to play a game, I'm playing a game because I want to like have control, you know, I want to be able to influence the story and like have some choice and some linear-ish story-driven games do give you the ability to like change the outcome like the uh, Detroit Become Human games you know they have like a bunch of different endings and all your decisions like influence each future action or whatever I've never played any of those games because I think most of them are exclusive to the PlayStation I may be wrong there but even if they weren't I probably wouldn't play them just because games are expensive and I don't have infinite money. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But yeah, I played it, and I was not a huge fan, which is okay. You don't have to like everything. If you personally like the game, I'm happy for you. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't a huge fan. But when I heard they were making a movie, or not a movie, a show, uh, about the game, I was actually pretty instantly excited basically as soon as I found out about it I just started watching it um, because like I said when it comes to like narrative story driven content entertainment um, if it's like a movie or a show I'm like perfectly happy with that because like you know that's a, like a one less element that they can mess up like with a game you know they have the story they can mess up but they also have like the gameplay that they can mess up um, and I feel like, for me personally, um, the story elements to Cyberpunk 2077 were fine, but the gameplay just wasn't really what I was looking for. Um, but with the show, that's completely missing. 
missing. Like you don't, it doesn't matter. You're not playing the show. Uh, and so I really liked the show. The show was awesome. Uh, I really hope that they end up doing more uh, movie or show narrative content with that cyberpunk universe because it is really like rich in like lore and storytelling and it's just an aesthetic like I said that I really like so that would be really cool to see them to use that more um, but yeah Rebecca was my favorite character she was pretty dope David was a pretty good protagonist I felt he was pretty relatable I mean Basically, if you want to have a, re a relatable main character, you just have life take a big old shit on him. Because <laughs> everyone can relate to that. But, uh, yeah, it was really sad. I found myself, like, <laughs> way more emotional at the end of it than I was expecting. Um, so, I mean, it's always, like, it's nice, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's, like, a sign of... It's like <laughs> being psychotic, I don't know. But like when something can make you feel emotions, I, I feel like that's pretty good. I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's kind of the point of a lot of like movies and shows. Like it's storytelling and storytelling is supposed to get an emotional response. That's kind of the whole point. Obviously, depending on what emotional response you want to get out of your viewer, you'll make content different, you know, if you want them to laugh, then you'll make it funny, and if you want them to cry, then you'll make it sad, like cyberpunk, <laughs> but like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people would immediately say that anything that makes you sad is potentially, like, bad, or just, like, something they don't want to watch, but honestly, I'm, like, the complete other way, because I, I mean, I love comedies as much as the next person, but, I don't know, like, if, if a show can get me to like these characters enough that I get genuinely sad and like on the verge of tears when something goes wrong, you know, or it's like the end of their story, like Bravo, in my opinion, like that's like, yeah, that's a good show. And Cyberpunk does that. I was really sad when Rebecca died. I thought because she was making it so close to the end, I was like, oh, maybe she'll be one of the ones that survives. Um, and then, nope, right at the end, she dies. <laughs> so that was kind of sad. Um, but yeah, it was a really good show. Uh, wasn't a huge fan of Lucy, personally. A little generic, I guess. But, I mean, what can you do? It was still a really good story. I mean, all of the characters, in my opinion, were good. I would just say that, for me personally, she was one of the weaker ones. Still, like, perfectly average or above average, potentially. Um, when you compare it to like other characters from other shows, you know, but if I'm just looking at it from the scope of, you know, all the characters in this one show and I had to rank them, I'd probably put Lucy pretty close to the bottom, in my opinion. I liked Maine a lot. Maine was pretty cool. I will say, um, I felt like his story arc, like, immediately evolved. That, like, was a little jarringly fast. I don't know. Like... I just feel like they didn't really show him becoming a psycho until, like, he was just a psycho. Like, it was the one episode, he was perfectly fine, and then the next episode, he was a psycho. I don't know. It was just a little bit of a jump, but I understand that they only had ten episodes, and technically they did kind of hint towards it, because he, throughout the show, before becoming a full-on psycho, was, uh, you know, injecting those neuroblockers, or whatever they called them, um, so, like, there were signs that he was, you know, devolving, but I do feel like it was still a bit of a harsh jump between being relatively in control, if not, like, pretty much completely in control, and then, like, turning against his own crew. Like, that was a little fast. But what can you do? Like I said, they only had ten episodes, twenty minutes each. Not a bunch of time to completely flesh out every single story. And like I said, the story is actually, in my opinion, it was like really... I, I don't know, like, to say it was well-paced kind of contradicts what I just said. But it was like... 
I do feel like they didn't dwell on anything for too long or, you know, not develop anything. Like, uh, I don't know. It is kind of contradictory to what I just said, but I do think the show was well-paced, I guess. Like I said, it got a pretty strong emotional response out of me in the end, so it was a good show in my opinion. But yeah, I really liked it. I'm getting the flashing icon that tells me that I'm running out of storage, so I'm probably going to have to go here in a bit. But uh, you'll have to let me know what you thought of the show if you've watched it. I assume that if you've made it this far into the video and are hearing me say this right now, then you've probably watched the show, because I assume if you hadn't, you would have clicked off this video by now. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll probably end up getting a new phone here pretty soon, so hopefully this recording limitation will be a thing of the past, but I cannot confirm when that will happen, because like I said, I don't have infinite money, but uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.